TroopResource.org, trying to put a thousand skills into every troop's backpack. All right, so welcome everybody to the November Troop Resource Show. I hope you enjoyed our obligatory technical difficulties. <laughs> Don't worry, we're working on getting a new key grip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so tonight's show is all about <clears throat> camp cooking and, and drinking. And drinking. Yes. And we are here with Randy the Man Hardy. Say hi, Randy. Bonjour. 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 And we are here with Greg Sloniker, who is an instructor of culinary arts. Correct. Okay. At Hamburger University. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All the best. So uh, we, we're doing something a little bit different tonight. We have got some pre-taped video along with our live banter. So, uh, Randy, this is really your show tonight because you are... Chef Boy Hardy. And ironically, tonight I actually have the correct hat on. <laughs> so, uh, and so it looks very stylish. It, it is very stylish. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I would say... Let's cover my bald spot, <laughs> which is pretty much... <laughs> <my bald. laughs> <laughs> so take it away. All right. Well, tonight's show, uh, we're going to um, pan out to some footage Scott and I shot about two months ago. And it's about <laughs> teaching scouts... Um, for trips, how to cook something that is easily reheated, uh, something they can freeze, put in their cooler, um, make it home, and it's going to be tasty, too. It's, they're not out in the woods using a two-burner propane stove to make something from scratch. They're in their kitchens, um, and this is a great recipe, too. It's, uh, it's making your own chicken cutlets from boneless chicken breast. You can do this at home. Everybody can do this at home. Um, it's and they're good. As a, as the cameraman for the show, I actually got to try some, and it, they were good. Look at you. There's, <laughs> there's, you know, pay attention to the little, um, the cooking tips, um, the seasoning tips. Greg, correct me. Uh, feel free, and I know you will. Oh, definitely. <laughs> All night long. And for those of you who don't know Greg, Greg is uh, another one of the assistant scout masters. He joined a couple years ago, and uh, he and I cook in the woods at times for 52 people. Yes. Um, he and I alone, one time in New York, in Staten Island, prepared 96 chicken thighs. How Chick long did that take you? When did you get served? It, 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 it took us a little over an hour. A little over an hour, thanks to daylight savings time. We turned the clock <laughs> with frozen chicken that Randy forgot to pull out. <laughs> so anyway, we pre-taped a show, which yeah. is out on our YouTube channel. Correct. I go out to YouTube, search on Troop Resource. You should see it there. Don't search on Wilderness Potty Bucket, though. <laughs> Trust me on this one. Trust me. So, um, the, well, the first clip that we have is about uh, actually cutting the chicken itself. You want me to roll Sure, that? let's roll the... the and All right. The first thing that we're going to need to do before we cut the chicken breast into smaller cutlets is we're going to need to make sure that we have a sharp knife. You want to start with a good knife. This is a uh, J.A. Henkel's knife. You can have another brand that has to be a top quality knife with a sharp edge. To make sure it's a sharp edge, you need one of these ceramic sharpening sticks. They're about four or five dollars. Um, you can get them just about anywhere. I got this one at uh, Harbor Freight. It was a great deal. And that's the box to look for. All right, so you want to pull the knife back, make sure that there's no one behind you. Pull back one, two, three, ten times. Ten times, and now the knife is sharp and it's ready to cut the chicken breast. Okay, so now we've sharpened our knife. We're ready to take a boneless chicken breast, and we're going to slice through it and make thinner cutlets out of it. I'm going to set this off to the side. Um, so, the way you do this is you press down on the chicken breast. You have your very sharp knife. Slowly pull the knife back towards you. 
and you'll see that sharp knife go about halfway through. Peel it back. This is so as to not get your fingers. You take it and just saw through it. And if you're done, you have one thinly sliced chicken breast. Place that on a plate. Do the same thing. Draw back towards you with the sharp knife. You will go about halfway through. Peel that up and then just slice down through. And you have two cutlets. And now probably you will only get four cutlets out of it. This is probably the most difficult part. You gotta come and draw back through. Do that one more time. And you will find that your last two pieces, this one sort of has a hole through it. I'm gonna put that down there. That's not, that's not fatal. That's fine. This one's a little stringy. It happens. Um, there is usually a piece of fat. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. That actually came off real nice. Um, you trim the pieces of fat, the pieces of cartilage um, off the bottom piece. And that's just going to make it unappetizing. So you just kind of trim the corners. There's a little bit of tendon over here. It's white, and it's chewy, and it's unappetizing. And so, out of one chicken breast, you'll see you got four pieces of cutlet. Um, and again, if you have scouts, younger scouts, uh, 10 to say 12, um, you can probably get away with um, three scouts per chicken breast. The older scouts, obviously, um, you're going to go two. But you're gonna, the older scouts are going to eat two of these. All right, so next we're going to move on to um, seasoning our breadcrumbs and uh, making a, uh, an egg wash. And we are back. So, <clears throat> we learned all about how to fillet the chicken. Without cutting your fingers. Without cutting your fingers. Yeah, I got all you mine. You still got ten? I still got ten. Right. And Grant, you were talking I got about... Mine. You, yeah, exactly. Well, who is it? It's, um, it's Harry. Ten. It always does the... the uh, yeah, 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 yeah. My finger... Try, by the way, that symbol is from the Saxon archers, who the French, when they would capture them, they would cut their two fingers off, so they'd be useless. As archers. As archers. And... The Saxons used to tease the French in the castles. Ah, here are my two fingers. I got my two. Yeah. Right. Ah, no, go away, or I you shall stunt you not a English second big time. Dog. And you cook? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should have lost both fingers. The way you were cutting that chicken, it looked like you should have lost your whole hand. Uh, well, go ahead, go ahead, Mr. Hamburger You. Yeah. Even though all you do is press patties all day long, but go ahead, tell that's, me. That's the easy part. I don't know. So, so, so how should you cut the so chicken? If that's the not chicken. how you cut the chicken, how should you cut it? No, that was fine. Oh! oh. That, was, that was adequate. I mean, okay, adequate. all right. It was adequate. adequate. But it looked like a turkey breast more than a chicken breast. That it was, was big. Yeah, it, it was, was huge. Big. That but was a big breast. You got three right, slices out of that? This is a family four. show. You got, you <laughs> got, family four, show. You got four, four slices, slices out of that? I got four slices out of that. Holy cow. That's because I sharpened my knife properly, and I made paper-thin cuts. Nice. Which are different than paper cuts. They are very different than paper cuts. So anyway, Greg, you were saying about uh, sand sanitation. 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 So we did have to cut that out. Yeah, we we, did. that's in the video that we have out on our YouTube archive. Uh, but we did cut it out of these clips. And this is a good reason to actually cut these chicken breasts at ahead home. of time. <clears throat> yeah, home. Right. Pack them and take them, keep them on ice. And that way you have sanitary wash station at home to do it. When you're in the woods, you don't exactly have... Right. Uh, the best sanitation practices and with chicken you're dealing with salmonella right. and which can be a, a deadly uh, bacteria absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Now, now one of the things that that came up uh was years ago and my son was earning either second class or first class there was a cooking requirement and they required him to not pre-cook the meat the meat had to be cooked there at the campsite so what we ended up doing i don't like that 
Uh, I don't like that either. But what we ended up doing is we took uh, our meat and we diced it yep. at home mm-hmm. and put it in a bag and stuck it in the freezer or not in the freezer in the in the fridge and then put it in a cooler. And that way, when he cooked it out at the campsite, it wasn't pre-cooked, but he didn't have to touch it. Just zip. And well, it's interesting you say that because zip and flip. When right. Scott had to do his uh, first class uh, cooking, he did the chili, and I had him prep everything at home, and we made a, a cooking kit. We right. browned the beef. Mm-hmm. He cut all the onions, the celery, the carrots, everything that needed to be cut. Right. And then all he had to do was assemble when he got there, and that really takes away a lot of the sanitation issues because yeah. now you're not dealing with raw right. meat. Right. So I don't agree with that. Let's not cook it until we get there. I think if it can be cooked ahead of time, I would especially agree with well, with our but... troop. I mean, we we do some really high adventure stuff. Kids come, they're exhausted. Yeah. Last thing they're thinking about is cooking. That's right. It's cooking, it's, it's but they need a meal, clean. right? Yeah, right. And, and we're, we've got 40, 50 kids on a trip. <clears throat> we've got eight patrols. We've got eight two burner stoves. We can't be watching them all, making sure. Right. And I want to well, just add one is... thing when. Ironically, when Scott did his first class cooking, Greg was on that trip as well. Greg was cooking. We called it no class cooking. That's right. <laughs> it was. Randy was my assistant. Ah, good. Assistant no class. Assistant no class. That's great. Keeping it classy. But so anyway, I, I agree. I'm a full advocate of pre cooking the meat at home. It makes it super easy. Even if they have to cut it there, I know that. Yeah. My wife, uh, one time they were making tacos, chicken tacos, mm-hmm. and she just put the chicken breasts in the oven and let them all cook, and then we packed them in bags, and they had to cut them up there at the campsite, so it was some of the culinary arts they had to learn for the, the trip, but mm-hmm. it wasn't raw chicken. And I just think you should do as much of the prep work at home as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Right. It's, you said, you know, yeah. you're a high adventure. You, you want to have fun when you're there. The last but it's a matter of the work. requirements in, in yeah. the book, and I don't remember what they are now. The, the new books come out since... Well, the book just says that you just have to cook the meal. You have to go and you have to shop for it. You have to plan it. <clears throat> uh, you have to demonstrate uh, the knowledge of the cooking. And it doesn't state that you have to do... Start with raw. Right? Yeah, it doesn't right. say anything about how to <clears throat> prep it or anything. It just says you have to cook it. It doesn't say where, you know, cool. and you're all you're doing is prepping it at home where it's sanitary, and then you're taking it. Right. Uh, in our business, that's the key. The whole key to cooking is the preparation. The actual finishing cooking is the easy part. It's all the prep work. Right. It's, it's not getting people sick, not making them Correct. ill. <laughs> and, Which, and, you know. It's key. And, and you fail, but I like that you keep trying. I well, like that you don't quit. Maybe I can teach you how to get a meal out on time instead of oh, maybe two, three, four hours later. I thought we're trying to get the kids away from fast food, Greg. Well, you definitely are not about fast food. I've been on trips with I'm you. I'm slow cooker. <laughs> slow cooker. Slow cooker. Speaking of cooking, let's talk a little bit about stoves. And Randy, you brought a stove I did. Um, to show off, I think. So we're talking about our high adventure. We go backpacking. This is uh, my backpacking stove. And uh, it's an X-City stove. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Wish. There's a couple other sites. It looks like a box. It does look like a box. Oh, you got the stove inside. It's the stove inside, and it just twist it like that. And this camera's see. not going to autofocus for you because otherwise it causes problems. But. All right, and then, <clears throat> oh, all right. Yeah. Walmart, you buy a little propane stove, and this just screws in. This folds out. These fold out. Let's fold out. This is a little cook kit. The actual stove. You can see another stove that's in there. Fits in there at all, and even the uh, propane will fit in there. And then, nice. You can see that that sits on top, and you cook it. There we go. Nice. And it's lit. Beautiful. And then you just screw it clockwise and it's off awesome and it unscrews and goes back in now how big a pot can you put on that because the pot you're showing is tiny that pot looks tiny it does it not however this is a nors uh pre-made noodle rice packet this entire packet will cook inside of this Um, you need 
What do you need? A cup and a half of water and uh, one cup of milk. It will actually fit all in there. Wow. My that looks like it's... I know. Well, two. it'll it'll fill to the brim, <clears throat> but mm -hmm. this will feed... By the way, on the we have side burners that are much bigger than this. We have two burner stand-up stoves, and we have bigger pots. I was going to say you can get bigger pots for that. This will right. this will feed a patrol of thirteen-year-old scouts, five thirteen-year-old right. scouts. This much of it. Now, I, I and then you cook the mess this. kit that I have. I mean, I've got pots that are that are this big. Yeah. And they'll this cook is a them. backpacking. So this. Right. You're worried about the weight on your back. You want to carry less than about forty pounds as an adult. Um, it all adds up pretty darn quick when you're going for two or three days. Right. How long does it take to boil water in it? It takes approximately five minutes to maybe six minutes to boil water in that. And one of these little propane tanks will last for about an hour of cooking. So, nice. Um, That's pretty sweet. And they're they, not that heavy. They're not heavy at all. I'm going to show you another stove right here that I've had since the late 40s. When you were a young lad, <laughs> since a scout uh, yourself. <laughs> the 70s, 80s, it's called an Optimus 8R, made in Sweden. Sweden. Oh, Sweden. Wrong anyway. country. Ah. That's right, wrong country. And so, it opens up like this. So, and, so much uh, for doing your prep work. I, yeah, that's right, my prep work. I fed on this little device 13 uh, ninth graders. On a five you week cooked 13th, 9th graders on that? <laughs> oh, you monster! Over five weeks. You cooked them over five weeks. He really, yeah, he really slow cooked them. Cook them. He's slower than you, Randy. So, uh, and the nice thing about this, and, and granted, Randy made me you know, a correction for me, but this works either on white gas or even gasoline, car gasoline. So How it, about diesel? Does it work on diesel? It does not work on oh, diesel. Oh, that sucks. And that's not a very diesel joke either. Uh, oh. So, anyway, uh, you can get gasoline anywhere, any filling station, and you'll be able to cook. Now, it is it is a little bit heavy, but it was made way back in the day. And it's probably hard to get the nozzle in there to fill it up. <laughs> it's very hard to get, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, guessing. Uh, Interesting. So, anyway, that's a great stove. They do not manufacture it anymore. You have to get it on eBay. Scott's Please. opinion is not necessarily the opinion of the rest of the chefs on this show. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we actually did, uh, when we did our cooking uh, for rank out in the parking lot of the church, mm -hmm. they used this stove. They used that one? Yeah, and it they fires were, up They like were this. desperate. Yeah, they and were. And it sounds like a rocket engine when it's going, <laughs> and it can boil a Do full, that again, that was interesting. <laughs> a He's full like a tank of water. Uh, really, so quickly. Do you want to go to our next clip? We'll go to the next clip. Let's roll them. Right, roll that roll beautiful tape. beam footage. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I would take one cup of regular four season or whatever seasoned breadcrumbs that you prefer, and I would put them into the breading bowl. I would then take another one cup of panko breadcrumbs. I find that it gives a, the panko gives a great uh, texture uh, not flavor, but just texture to it. Um, and after that, we have our breadcrumbs. We have one cup of regular, one cup of panko. We're going to add seasoning to this. Seasoning will be to taste. This is my own private herb garden um, brand. It's a mix of tarragon, oregano, parsley, sage, rosemary. And I would put, to those two cups, I would put two teaspoons of this private flavoring. Next, we have pepper that I ground from a mill, and here's your peppercorns that you're going to need to refill. I would, again, I would put about half a tablespoon, that's my personal preference, right in there. And then next, I have, just for ideas, there is, um, it's a little bit of orange peel, if you like orange chicken and you like the orange flavor, you can put about half a tablespoon in there. Uh, if not, um, the next thing you want, do want to put in is salt. Now, this is uh, Himalayan pink salt, it could, doesn't have to be fancy salt, um, it could be anything. Mrs. Dash, I do put Mrs. Dash in there as well. Um, and then if you wanna spice it up a little bit, there's some turmeric. You could put uh, smoked paprika in there, just about anything you like. But the idea is to now season the breadcrumbs. And I'm gonna reach back and get myself a spoon, or a fork rather. And I'm just gonna mix that all up before we start dipping the chicken into the eggs. 
You see, just mix it around the salt, the pepper, everything, and you're gonna have a nicely seasoned um, chicken cutlet. That was the the breading of the chicken, and you had this jar with a cork in it with with all kinds of spices in it. Talk a little bit about that. All right. Well, those are homegrown spices in the backyard. Mm -hmm. um, my wife and I we we grow them: tarragon, uh, sage, parsley. Thyme, oregano, and marjoram. Put them in and I, that jar. I dry them and I put them in that jar and I grind them up in a mortise. Um, okay. And uh, and sometimes I don't. And sometimes I just break it up with my hands. And it's just every time that we dry them, it's a different mixture. It's a different ratio. Okay, so it's going to be a different flavor. Every it's a time. different. Well, it's, it's very similar. Okay. Um, now, if you don't do that, poultry seasoning. Um, you can get a whole big jar of poultry seasoning. Uh, I'm going to give a, another plug to a place that I really love uh, called the Head Nut in Havertown. I've heard of that. And <clears throat> you go there and you can get, for $5 or $4, you can get um, 10 times the amount of poultry seasoning that you can get at the supermarket. And you'll probably pay the same price approximately I for know, 10 times. I know the Head Nut. I didn't realize they sold spices there. They sell they spices. They do spices. Right here yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and things like that. Hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Um, but just trying name. to give people tips. Um, the only downfall to dry spices is uh, after about six months, they pretty much lose their flavor. So you want to buy them in amounts that you can use up within about six months. Right. Really? So if I go out and I buy the stuff at the grocery store, mm -hmm. six months it's flavorless? As soon as you open it up, it begins to ah, deteriorate. As soon as you open it up. As soon as you open it up, it begins to deteriorate. What if I put it in the fridge? And then... Actually, not a good idea because yeah. the fridge has moisture yep. mm -hmm. and the herbs will absorb the moisture. Yep. Even with the lid cool. tightly yep. closed? Yep. Hmm. I did not know that. Well, now you do. Now you do. And you'll forget you... it in a week, knowing you. <laughs> what you what can did you do... say? Do you... Tell <laughs> me, <See>? today. <laughs> you can take the uh, fresh herbs and freeze them. Yeah. Oh, freeze mm -hmm. them. Take them and freeze them. But okay. you, you need to um, you need to uh, pick them off vacuum, the stem. You vacuum seal them. Oh, you can do them with a block bag. What about those little fine? things yeah. you okay. get in your, your vitamin... Jars, the silica like packs. That. Yeah, the silica packs. That'll help pull out moisture. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but eventually they'll become overloaded as well. So. Right, but could I drop that in a jar of, of cinnamon or a jar? I don't know of if I want to put that in something I'm eating. No. Really, you, no. Take, you take your vitamins with it. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Greg. I don't. I don't know <laughs> enough about it. I, don't know I wouldn't. Either. I wouldn't advise it. Okay. Not on the show. I would not it advise it. Um, I would. I would vacuum seal. First of all, let's think about this. They sell things like Red Bull at the supermarket and, and <clears throat> convenience stores, and we all know that Red Bull causes strokes and memory loss. So you drink? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome to the show. <laughs> now, I actually uh, I am curbing my Red Bull intake. Oh, good, it's good to hear. I am not. Uh, I, I, I can't stand that stuff. Oh, I loved it. I would drink it? a case a month easily. Ooh. But I don't now, like the flavor. and he'd wash it down with a cigarette <laughs> and a shot of vodka. And right. a shot of vodka. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm really I'm cutting back. I'm actually making my own now. What I do is I'll take. Apple oh juice. God, he's got a Red Bull. <laughs> still. I, I got a Red Bull still. Uh, I, I take. I'm grape making juice, my own. Red Bull. Stop. Grape juice, Just stop. And, this was a family and, show. And, right, and I put uh, vitamin B6 in it and B12 and C. And some ginkgo, fish and oil, some glucosamine. No, I don't do fish, no fish oil. oil. It makes it taste fishy. Okay. And I like the macro flavor myself. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, it's a vitamin kind of drink that I'm trying to use as a replacement for Red Bull. By the way, you can get this online at Amazon. This whole kicking cooking kit comes with this lid. I recommend this. Um, it's great. This is also a drinking cup. This is your boiling pot. If Randy recommends it, go somewhere else. It comes with this little doohickey right here, which goes on the bottom of your oh, propane man. tank and stabilizes it on uneven terrain. All for about $14 for the whole kit. Oh, wow. Um, you do get the stove. You get the stove with that too? Stove, for 14 right? Bucks? Comes with bottle opener, can opener, and what I like the most corkscrew. Wine opener. You, yeah. Wine opener when you're out camping with the missus. No wine. Um, or the winos. <laughs> and uh, has this nice little cinch sack that carries it all in your backpack. 
All right, Scott, roll them. All right, so we're going to roll our uh, last clip, uh, and this one's going to talk about uh, how the chicken cutlet should look after you've cooked it so you know when it is done. And there's the final color, and it looks perfect. Look at that. There you go. Mmm. And they can make this for you as well. It doesn't just have to be for trips. So, from Chef Boyhardy's Kitchen, I'm saying bon appetit. You know what? All right, so we are on, back, live on and we're having a nice little argument here. So Randy is <laughs> teaching uh, all you guys how to drop a little drop of water in your oil, and you start hearing it go... Just like my grandmother taught me. That's like my mother taught right. me, but grandmother Greg, Randy, you're bro. telling us that's not the so way I'm to do it. I'm glad you're teaching your, your young kids how to oh, oh. put hot, mix hot oil with water. Are you, are you yeah. saying my grandmother's wrong? Yes, I'm saying your grandmother's wrong. Those the, oh, sit. <laughs> sit I'm going to show you my belly. That, that was nasty. <laughs> so, so what should you use? Use breadcrumb. And they they sizzle? Do yeah. they crinkle? Do they pop? Well, what's the outside of your breading? Breadcrumb. Okay. So if you put the breadcrumb in the hot fat, you don't get the popping of the water in the oil. Okay. You see the browning of the breadcrumb, and you can judge by how quickly so that is browning. So it is uh, visual, yeah. not auditory. Correct. So watch the breadcrumb and see how it browns. If it browns instantly, your fat's too hot. If it takes a little bit too long, then it's but too don't cold. You have to, I, I got bad vision. I'm not going to stick my face that close to the hot oil to, you don't to have see. To. And, and breadcrumbs aren't, they're from bread, right? They're food. Isn't that wasting food? I was always taught not to waste food. I can tell by your stomach you don't waste much at all. <laughs> That little bit of breadcrumb so, isn't wasting. So no, 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 no. That tiny yeah. little drop of water. I've never is not even good. thought about yep. that. Because that's yeah. the way I grew up. Another way to tell is take a wooden spoon. A wooden spoon always holds moisture. Take and a hit the spoon. kids with it. No, hit the chef with it. Oh. Well, my chef grandmother always did. Party. She would always hit me with it when I wouldn't put the water in the oil. I would have used a shovel to hit you, not a wood spoon. <laughs> now take the wood spoon. Wood spoons always have moisture in them. Take and put the end of the the, the spoon end into the fat mm -hmm. and watch the edge of the spoon where the fat meets the, the spoon and right. you can watch it sizzle. No wait, the spoon has moisture in it. He told me not to put moisture in the but fat. But it's not water. It's just moisture. It doesn't What is splatter. moisture but water? It doesn't splatter. It does if you drop the spoon in well, the hot oil. You're not supposed to drop the spoon in. Well, sometimes you have you can't help it. You have an accident. And so, well, that's really interesting. That, that I'm going to have to try that next time. It's yeah. going to be difficult for me to give up that habit. Probably as difficult as to. Get Another way to board. do it is just take Randy's finger and stick it in the oil. And if he screams too loud, then it's too. Loud. I don't keep Randy. That's what my grandmother used to do as well. <laughs> <laughs> when the water was shut off in her house. <laughs> there you go. And she couldn't find the wooden spoon. <clears throat> Not full knowledge. Uh, another another the plug. Mountain House. Mountain House um, you can get these at Walmart as well. I've never these had are actually, one of those. They're, they're actually pretty darn good. They're not, eh, the salt content's pretty high. Um, it's like an MRE, right? It, yeah. No, it's... it's. It is it's very similar to an MRE. It's, uh, What's it's, it's the, about 10 steps above an MRE. I've had okay. MREs, and I've had these. These are actually pretty tasty. Some okay. of the MREs are good. Some of them are bad. Yeah, well, a lot of them are bad. I've yeah. never had a good one. I've had a couple of good ones. Have you? Yeah, okay. I've never <laughs> but then again, you thought your sausage gravy was good, so consider the source. I'm just saying. Mine? The one, remember when we were in Gettysburg and none of the boys would touch your sausage gravy? And I had to it's beg them. they wanted to get the heck out. <laughs> <laughs> and they thought they were stopping at Wawa. They did think they were stopping at Wawa, mm -hmm. which they've got better sausage gravy than you. Oh, okay, that's fine. That was more for me. And obviously I, I, you. At any rate, <laughs> if... If you have any um, reservations, any doubts, these are pretty darn good. They're. I'd say like, try it at home before you take right. it yeah, out. I would too. They're, I, I hate bad meals yeah. in the field. You're right. Try them at home. Um, they also sell um, big cans of it, like number 12 cans, and you can scoop it out in put portions it in, and put it in Ziploc, Ziploc bags. bags yeah. And all you have to do is add water to it. Okay. You bring a bottle like this, which has the uh, gradation right here on the side, and you know exactly how much you pour it out. So, plastic water bottle with gradation on the side, you can sort of see it there. 
And the use by date is 2046. So don't leave these on your shelf for too long. Yeah. That's pretty much wow. Randy's cooking right or there. Or they'll be as old as Scott. Ooh. That, I think he's calling me a youngster. 2046. 2046? 20, yeah. yeah. Well, you are a youngster. Look at you. Well, cool. Now, I, I'm not a I'm not a big fan of of packaged stuff, so well, well, I'd have to try it. I really would have to try it and see. In a pinch, yeah, in and a pinch. when you're when you're hauling all your own food for a couple days, this yeah, well, that's different backpacking. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, when we go camping, we're basically car camping. We right? are, yeah. but Tent some camping. sometimes we are out and we're walking around for 10, 15 miles, like we were in Gettysburg. You bring this and a little stove. And this, and you don't have to have um, a sandwich that was smushed that was in the hot weather. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just not. I've never it's, had. A, it's also something good to hang on to around the house just in case of an emergency. Hmm. You know, you lose power, oh, yeah. you lose whatever. Yeah. Well, I've got a bug out you know, Armageddon. Bag. If, we have a, if we have a national disaster kind of yeah. deal with, with a tornado or something like that, I've got three days worth of food that we'd throw in the car. Yeah. Well, so. I'm taking three bags this weekend, mm -hmm. just in case Randy's cooking is that bad. I'm going to so. do a plug right now. Uh, be, just mentioning about food is um, mm -hmm. this weekend, the 17th and 18th, is the Scouting for Food weekend. Yes. So the scouts may come around in your neighborhood and, and give them you know whatever canned goods you have. Uh, out there. One of the things that I'm doing is I take my bug out bag worth of food, three days worth of food, and all of the uh, expiration dates are still good, and I donate that, and then I replenish. So it serves two purposes. It's a good idea. That is a good idea. Just make sure your food is in date when you It is in yeah, date, yeah. yeah. And we have the food drive coming up this weekend, so if you got a flyer on your front porch uh, that last weekend, Scouts are going to come by on Saturday, and they're going to pick up the food, and then they're going to haul it to different uh, food banks. So I urge you to put out a couple bags of food. Yeah, be generous. Be generous. Um, we've, all three of us, we've been to the food bank, and we've seen it's bare, and then we come in and we fill all the shelves. And by the Super Bowl of caring, it's bare again. Wow. There, are, there are families out there. I mean, And we're putting food... Essentially, the equivalent of a supermarket aisle into right. these food banks, and it is gone within two months. Um, so, that's my serious plug. Right. Um, we're going to have a couple bags on our front porch. We're not going to be here this weekend. We're going to be zip lining in Lums Pond, Delaware, with the scouts. We're going to be cooking. Greg and I. Okay. Um, it's an awesome adventure. Yeah, it should be fun. It's great as long as I don't unhook your harness. When you're... Uh, that's why you've got two carabiners. You've got, and I, I heard that one of the leaders is going to be dressed up as Spider-Man in a tribute to Stan Lee and ziplining across Lum's Pond in a Spider-Man. I wonder who that might be. I don't know, mm. but, you know. Some, one of our more flamboyant leaders, yeah. I think. Do they make a Spider-Man suit that big? <laughs> I didn't think about that. <laughs> he's oh, you know, he's gonna wear Spider-Man briefs for when he was a kid. <laughs> That's just a sign of Bruce Wayne. This is a family show. <laughs> oh man! Ooh, glad I ate earlier. This is this is why we do this show not in uniform because That's probably why we are not sponsored by we are not Scouts BSA. Absolutely not. But if you would like to sponsor us, yes. Absolutely. Send your money to Randall Hardy. <laughs> but, well, you know, that's a nice little segue as that well. Is a segue. One of the things that we're going to try and do this year is put together a small troop cookbook, a troop resource cookbook of one pot recipes. Yep. So that you do the prep work in advance or you come out with three cans of something and something else and you mix it all together. You cook it all in one pot. It's good for six to eight kids. And, uh, the other thing you may want to add to that, real easy. Uh, I was thinking about this the other night, you told me about it on Monday, but what about uh, adding something about aluminum foil cooking as yes, well? Yes, yes. Uh, ducks or turtles or whatever you might want to call them. Exactly. But, uh, and you know, the idea is we'll sell it for a couple of dollars, and that way you can fund the show. And these are tested recipes. That yes, tested. 
you know, <laughs> all, kid all, tested. All, <laughs> all kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all kidding aside, we take our cooking very serious, and we take teaching the kids cooking very seriously. Um, some of the recipes that we've made out in the woods, um, again, Greg's uh, sausage biscuit uh, gravy. It was phenomenal. It really was. Um, the kids <laughs> thought they were going to Wawa. They, were, they, really did. <laughs> they were all disappointed. But, but when they, I forced them to eat it, which is a oxymoron, they loved it. Um, but we've made Dover sole. We've made mm-hmm. spinach souffle in the woods. Um, Eggs Benedict. The chicken and dumplings. Chicken and dumplings. Um, there we was did omelets a, in a bag. Omelets in a bag, which is another great recipe yeah. for camping. <clears throat> um, you just take a Ziploc bag. Crack a couple eggs into it, scramble it up, drop it into boiling water. It actually makes really good it scrambled tops. eggs. No kidding. Uh, yeah, and there's no mess. Straight. There's no cleanup. <laughs> Make them ahead of time. I made them on what? Do you do them in, in like sandwich bags? You do them in quart bags? I did them in a Ziploc sandwich bag. Okay. And you and can put whatever fillings you want in there. Okay. I did potatoes, mushrooms, yep. and peppers. Yep. And uh, I did three eggs per. Mm-hmm. And you just scramble everything. You put it in a bag. So you each zip it scout closed. gets a bag. Each scout gets a bag. And, and we learn from our, we, we learn from our mistakes. You want to crack them and not put the shell in there. <laughs> yeah, Randy, don't put the shells in there next time. Okay. Yeah. Mine were good. I don't know about yours. So anyway, so you got let's say you got six or eight scouts in a patrol, mm-hmm. and you put all six into a big. Pot of boiling water at the same time. Yeah, same they, time. Yeah. They cook them in these little things, like I, two bags. I recommend time. no more than two eggs per bag. Um, they take right. they take a little longer when even three takes. Well, about I did I did them for adults, and it took yeah. fifteen minutes in boiling water. Yeah. Okay. Now because we did ones where you cook we did eggs, more eggs for the you poach yeah, eggs did, in a paper cup. You can do that too, or a paper bag. I haven't done it in a paper mm-hmm. bag. How do you poach an egg in a paper bag? Oh, you don't poach it; it just cooks. So you don't crack it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then it's hard boiled. Yeah, you can do hard boiled. I mean, not, it's, not boiled. Right it's not boiled. It's not boiled. I mean, it's 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 cold. It's like, it could be. You can serve it hot too. You can do soft boiled. Interesting. We're hard boiled egg takes twelve we're, minutes. We're, soft boiled egg takes four. We're going to have to talk about how to do some of that in this little cook thing <clears> because, especially <throat> the one in the in the plastic bag. This little plastic bag is awesome. great. I made them Friday morning, <clears> and we packed them in plastic containers. You mean you cracked them in advance? I made everything Friday morning before we left yeah. on the trip, and I put them in a plastic container and sunk it in ice, and they were good till Sunday. And I pulled them out Sunday, and oh, bam, that's right awesome. Off. I do all my prep work ahead of time. That's awesome because you always worry about the eggs getting cracked when you're in yeah. the cooler. Well, well, we're doing. I'm doing almost to order this Sunday for breakfast, and I'm gonna have all the mise en place done for all the ingredients. I'll crack all the eggs and whip them and put them in a plastic container. Everything will go on ice. So when I'm ready to go on Sunday, I'll just pull up my nonstick pans and little really little awesome. factoid too. Um, <clears throat> the eggs when they're in the shell, they don't need to be refrigerated for a couple of days. You mm-hmm. can take them and <clears throat> leave them somewhere out of the cooler. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll last for at least two days outside yeah. so if I've got eggs in my fridge mm-hmm. I can take them out leave them in a container for two days and yep. they're still good as long as it's not 80 degrees outside. yeah not yeah. in a hot car okay. room temperature but, but it, ro- okay. about 70 degrees okay room temp 70 okay. 72 usually right. when we're camping it's average about 60 65 yeah. degrees when we're out in the woods mm-hmm. so okay. they're good and nice. if you go to Europe uh, <clears throat> they have baskets of eggs sitting on the counter and, and just fresh eggs. They don't if you go to there. Europe, remember your passport. That's right. Right. Well, I know that my niece has chickens. She's up in New England. Mm-hmm. And those eggs, they leave unrefrigerated for a super long period of time. You're not supposed to wash them either right. until you're going to use them. Yep. Which is different than they do at the grocery well, store. They don't you have don't a choice. Chicken poop. Well, I've, I've heard eggs, that you're not supposed to wash chickens because the water splatters... They're like cats, you know. They don't. No, I think he's meaning a whole chicken, right? Yes, or chicken breast. Yes, chicken. you're right. Don't wash chickens. That's the the misnomer is that you wash your chicken in the sink. Right. And our question as culinarians is, what are you washing? All you're doing is splattering salmonella all over the kitchen. The only way to kill it would be to use bleach of some kind. Really? Yeah. yeah. So don't wash chicken. Now you see. Well, I hate to be gross about it, but I was I was told a long time ago that basically. It, factory chicken that comes through the factories yeah. basically wait they s- make chickens in factories <laughs> yeah. they do alright basically reminds me of that song peaches is, come from is, a can is they were put there by a man in, in like fecal matter you know water filled with fecal matter so you wash the chicken or you rinse it when you get home and what are you rinsing 
You're trying to rinse some of it off. You're not going to get it off. No. All the bacteria is going to stay there. The <laughs> only way to get rid of the bacteria is to cook it. Yep. I did not know this. Most people don't. Which is why you don't hear of chicken tartare. Exactly. <laughs> beef tartare, yeah. Right. Right. But that's, yeah. Do you wash your beef? No. No. no I will no. eat beef after <laughs> it walked through a warm room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Before it's dead? Before it's dead. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's Fur and all. <laughs> you really are a carnivore. Oh, no. oh, I hate overcooked steak. Oh. So do I. Oh. I like my steak. I order it medium all the time. If it comes really? a little rare, that's great. Yeah, if it comes a little rare. well done, I'm okay with it. Pork, medium rare? No. Oh, yeah. No. What about no, uh, no, pork medium. trichinosis? Trichinosis hasn't been occurred in this country in 35 years. Hasn't been occurred? Has not been occurred. Has not been occurred. That's New English. Okay. You want to learn my language. <laughs> All right. uh, That's what happens when you take, you know, sort of milk products and they come occurred. Yeah. yeah so no, pork no. has not been occurred for a long time. Ooh. According to... Cheese has been occurred. According to our <laughs> sanitation class, Okay. All, and this happened about uh, eight years ago, <clears throat> ten years ago, uh, the guidelines for cooking pork are now the same as beef. No. Uh, we in the industry have been cooking pork medium rare for the last 25 years or more. Speaking in That's the amazing. in the industry, I'm going to give Scott's uh, Scott. I'm going to give Greg's uh, university a little plug here. Here's <laughs> here's a little meal from Greg's university. My alma mater. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty much we call it in the industry. We call it a sad meal, right? Because it's really unhealthy. And then Greg likes to give away these little these little toys for kids, but they're really, I mean, choking hazards. So like, little Johnny's out there, and he's like, oh, car. <laughs> but I've spiced it up a little bit. I've made it a happy meal, is what I like to call it, by putting a really safe toy that will save your life in there, and it is <laughs> the piggyback ham radio. <laughs> Right? A ham radio will save your life, right? I got this from the Piggly Wiggly when I saved my pink SH stamps. pink stamps. <laughs> see, how I, see how I brought that around, it's, Scott? It's like a Beatles song, you know? They take the lyrics from their older music and they put it into the newer music. It's really it's awesome. Do you like how I, I did that thing? That was very that, cool. That was, yeah, brilliant. Keep going, keep going. I won't save you. I know CPR, but I'm not using it. <laughs> oh. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this show tonight. We're really running long. Randy, thank you very much for always Welcome. being our comic relief. And for degrading myself in such a manner. That and doesn't take much. No, it doesn't. <laughs> and Greg, thanks for coming in. My pleasure. Hope to have you again. Yeah, and thank you, Greg, for coming by. Seriously. No uh, for everyone else out there, thank you for attending. Remember, our show is the second Wednesday of every month, uh, September through June, and we uh, launch our show at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, everything that we have, generally, we edit, and then we put out on our YouTube archive. Go out to YouTube, search on Troop Resource, and you'll find all of our previous shows. And until we see you again, Randy. Here's a little tip to Mary Tyler Moore. Bon appétit. <laughs> Have a good bon night. Bon Good night. Troopresource.org. Trying to put a thousand skills into every troop's backpack.